Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Epic Future Space. My name is Michael Clark, and today we're going to be doing an orbital update and talking about SpaceX's recent Falcon 9 flights. Now in my last video, I made a mistake. I got so caught up talking about the reusable program that when I was talking about their Falcon 9 flights where they did the first stage controlled descent after it separated from the second stage, I did say correctly that Flight 6 was delivering the Cassiope satellite into orbit. That was right. But what I made the mistake on was that CRS-3, the flight that delivered cargo to the International Space Station, I said that that was Flight 7, when in fact it was actually Flight 9. Just a small, important detail. <laughs> so today I want to correct that mistake and talk in more detail about Flight 6, Flight 7, Flight 8, and Flight 9 as well. So all four of these flights actually flew on the Falcon 9 version 1.1 as opposed to the old 1.0 configuration. And we've already talked about it a little bit, but just for the sake of refreshing our memories, let's talk about it in a little bit more detail. The major changes that have been made is that the nine engines that make up the Falcon 9 have been changed from their kind of straight pattern to an octagonal pattern and then have a central engine in the middle. So still nine engines, just a little bit different pattern so that they don't have any more overheats and have any more engines blow up or anything like that, which I think only happened once, but I'm, I'm not exactly sure. The version 1.1 rocket also has upgraded Merlin 1D engines, which generate 56% more thrust at sea levels. Because of these bigger engines, they've also extended the fuel tank a little bit to carry more fuel. So it's about 60% heavier than it used to be, but also delivers 60% more thrust than it used to. So it's a good upgrade. Falcon 9 version 1.1 flew for the first time on September 29th, 2013 and delivered the Cassiope satellite for MDA Corp. Now the Cassiope satellite is a much lighter payload than what the version 1.1 can actually deliver, but since this was a technology demonstrator mission, that's why they chose to have a lighter payload and they also offered this whole flight for a much cheaper price to MDA Corp because of all the risk involved. But the mission delivered the payload successfully, and this was also the first time that a satellite flew on a Falcon 9 rocket for a commercial customer, so that's pretty cool. One of the other firsts on this mission was that they had a jettisonable payload fairing for the first time. They also tried, albeit unsuccessfully, to reignite the second stage engine to be able to deliver a payload to geosynchronous transfer orbit, where the delta V required to change a satellite's inclination is probably the least, depending on where they want that satellite to eventually be in a stable orbit. It's very necessary for them to do that because lots of their future missions require delivering a payload to geosynchronous transfer orbit, or GTO. However, on Flight 6, they did have a successful controlled descent of the rocket's first stage. They didn't quite have enough RCS power to be able to orient the spacecraft once it re-entered the atmosphere, and I believe that it went into a tumble. But even so, it was awesome that they were able to do the successful re-entry into the atmosphere. Even without landing it on land, it's a good capability to have so that you don't have spent first stages just orbiting and slowly decaying in their orbits and causing more space junk. The RCS problem was fixed though, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Now in order to do this controlled descent, they need extra fuel to be able to burn, and thus that's why the version 1.1 rocket has the extended fuel tank. However, because they need that extra fuel, they're actually able to deliver less weight into orbit than the version 1.0. Although, that's okay, because once they get it fully reusable, it's gonna bring the price way down. So even though it's slightly less than version 1.0, I think the, uh, the benefits outweigh the, the cons. The pros outweigh the cons, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Something else really cool about Flight 6 is it was the first time that a Falcon 9 rocket launched from Vandenberg Air Force Base. So that's where the Falcon Heavy is going to be launching from, so I'm very happy that the operations there are ready to go. Alright then, moving on. Falcon 9 Flight 7 successfully launched on December 3rd, 2013 and delivered the SES-8 communications satellite which provided services for the Asian Pacific, Indochina, and South Asia. It was also the first launch of a Falcon 9 version 1.1 from Cape Canaveral. On Flight 7, SpaceX did not attempt to do a controlled descent of the first stage because they wanted to save fuel and successfully deliver their payload into its intended orbit. SES-8 is one of those missions where SpaceX needs to deliver the payload into geosynchronous transfer orbit so that it can get into its intended inclination to provide services, in this case for the Asian Pacific. 
The way that they were able to do that was by successfully reigniting the second stage in order to get it to the intended orbit it needed to be into. Now the previous failure on flight 6 to reignite the second stage engine was caused by frozen igniter fluid lines and after a minor redesign adding some more insulation they were able to successfully reignite or relight the second stage engine and deliver the SES-8 satellite into its intended GTO or geosynchronous transfer orbit and thus also proving that SpaceX has the capability to do so. So all in all flight 7 was very much a success. Falcon 9 Flight 8 successfully launched on January 6, 2014 from Cape Canaveral and it delivered the TICOM-6 satellite to geosynchronous transfer orbit. TICOM-6 provided satellite TV to Thailand and also communications for Southeast Asia, Africa, and Madagascar. Just like on Flight 7, they did not attempt to do a controlled descent of the first stage so that they could ensure that they would get their payload to its intended orbit. Even though this was only the third flight of the Falcon 9 version 1.1, it almost seems routine, and as far as I or, or most of the public could tell, there weren't really any snafus or mistakes or any problems, so that's wonderful. So moving on again, Flight 9 was an awesome flight. It successfully launched on April 18th, 2014 and launched from Cape Canaveral. And what it delivered into orbit was a Dragon capsule carrying CRS-3, the Commercial Resupply Services, Flight 3, carrying cargo to the International Space Station. And oh, oh, it was a beautiful flight. This was the first Falcon 9 version 1.1 to actually fly a Dragon into space. The other three had the jettisonable payload fairings and satellite payloads. There was a lot of really cool stuff that was delivered to the ISS this time, including a new high definition Earth observation camera, a laser communications demonstrator, and a veggie hydroponic system to grow lettuce on the space station. They also delivered a pair of legs for the Robonaut 2, which has been on the station for years now and has hardly been used. And even though they got these legs, the purpose of them is so that it can go out and do EVAs and with these legs be able to grab onto the handholds that the astronauts normally use so that Robonaut 2 can help out a lot with the repairs or even go into dangerous situations that they might not want to send an astronaut into. However, Robonaut 2 won't quite be fully operational because Another future flight is going to be delivering a backpack, which is a battery pack, and it needs that final step to be operated on its own with the torso that's already up on the space station, the legs that were delivered on CRS-3, and then the future flight, which is going to have the battery pack. Otherwise, it needs to constantly be plugged in, so to speak, to uh, get power. Once Robonaut 2 is operational, I'm sure it's going to be awesome. It's going to, it's going to be awesome. I know it. Some other cool things that happened on this launch was after the Dragon capsule separated from the second stage, it, the second stage had five CubeSats that it deployed into various orbits. And uh, there were lots of different purposes for them. I'm not really going to get into that right now, but that's pretty awesome that they're doing uh, secondary payloads again. Also, which we talked about in my last video, they did a controlled descent of the first stage, and this first stage was the first one to have retractable landing legs, like on the Falcon 9R Dev 1 test vehicle. And it was beautiful, it was beautiful. I mean, ah, oh, so awesome. The first soft touchdown of an orbital liquid rocket booster ever. That's so cool. SpaceX currently has a Falcon 9 rocket sitting on the pad, which will be Flight 10, to deliver the much-delayed OG-2 constellation of satellites for Orbcom, and I really wish them the best of luck on this. This particular launch has been delayed a lot. It seems like almost all their launches at least get cancelled once, and I hate it when it happens. Three, two, one, zero. We have a terminal count launch of four. Proceeding to the thermal count launch abort. Uh, DC aborts the thermal count sequence of not already in No! But all joking aside, I really do wish them the best of luck and hope that this mission successfully launches on its next target date, which I'm not exactly sure if that's July 15th or July 16th. In any case, best of luck, and I'm sure that SpaceX will be flying Flight 10 very soon. Well, I hope this video wasn't too long for you, and although a lot of you guys out there might already know a lot about these four flights, I still hope that you learned something, and thank you very much for joining me. I'm very glad to be back and very excited about just all this activity that's going on in space right now, and I hope that we can continue the conversation going. There's quite a few things that we could talk about next time, and uh, I would like for you guys to vote on that for me. 
I really need to talk about the Atlas V and all this craziness that's been going on with Russia and Ukraine and Crimea. Oh, and the factories that are over there. Oh, it's just a big mess. So we can talk about that and I can talk about the repercussions of what this will mean for the Atlas V and what the heck we're gonna do to try to replace it. There's also the IXS Enterprise, which I really am excited about and really, ah, oh, I'm just as excited about that as I am the Nautilus X. So if you want me to talk about the IXS Enterprise, then let me know. And if you don't know what that is, then Google it and let me know if you would rather have me talk about something else. I gotta talk about SpaceX's new programs, the Dragonfly and the Dragon V2, but I've already had two videos so far talking about SpaceX, so let's talk about somebody else. Orbital Sciences has gotten to the space station. Their uh, Antares rocket and their Cygnus capsule has successfully flown, so we could talk about that as well. So please let me know what you would like me to talk about, either one of those three things or something else. And if I like one of your suggestions better, then that's what we'll talk about. Well, anyway, until next time, Ad Astra, to the stars. <laughs>